In this video, which is our last video in the series, we're going to talk about archiving your projects and restoring your projects. Flame is different in the sense of some other compositing applications where you choose file, save, and there's a file that you put on a specific destination that you choose. And then if you want to share that, open it later, you just go and open it. If you remember in the very beginning when we talked about creating a Flame project, I talked about all the folders and subdirectories that Flame creates when you create a project. If I go over to Finder once again, and I choose Go To Folder from the Go menu, and remember forward slash USR. If I choose that, we go to a hidden folder on my Mac system named USR. In there is a folder called Discrete. I'll double click on it to go into that folder, and we see a series of subfolders. These are created when you install Flame. There's the project folder, and if I expand that, we'll see the different individual folders for each project that I have on my system. I'll double click on the folder that is for this project I currently have open. If you're curious as to why the name has changed, it's because I'm using beta software and I switched to a new version of the beta software for 2017 extension 1. So the project's name was updated when I installed and started to use a new beta version. But all of these folders that you see here, these were created when we created the project. And as we're working, if we're saving different setups, whether it's for the batch setup, whether it's a color correction, whether it's a simple tool as a dissolve, those files will be saved in these folders. This is part of what Flame is going to take and put it into a neat package for you in the archive so you can easily restore it on a different system or on your own system later. The other option to think about when you create an archive is the media that you have with inside your project. I'll hold the control key and tap to the left side to bring my media panel back. Everything in your media panel, everything in your desktop, your batch reels, your reels, your libraries, this will also be part of the archive with the different setups. So an important part to take into consideration is the size of the archive. Some good housekeeping rules before you create an archive is to clean up your project with elements that you do not need to be part of that project because those elements and media that are not needed or not relevant to the final project that you want to save will add to the size of the archive. Try to keep your library and libraries as clean as possible. Remove material that you no longer want to be part of this project and part of the archive. So for example, if you remember this clip right here on my batch renders, this was just part of me trying to show you how to connect nodes and what the different color codes meant for each node. I don't really need this as my final project, so I'll take this, drag it to the bottom of the UI, and throw it away. Now that I've done that on my working desktop, I want to save this desktop to my library. Because if we look at the library, it still has that clip in it. So I'll come down to my Save button, choose Save, and then choose Replace. Now if I go back to that library that I just opened a second ago, that clip is no longer there. It's one less element that has to be processed or saved in the archive. So now I have my project organized and clean. I want to create an archive. You create an archive in the Media Hub. To go to the Media Hub, I could click on the tab on the bottom, or I can hold spacebar F1. Along the top of our Media Hub, you'll see it reads Browse 4. Files is your default choice. This is where we're going to import and export our files. We've already looked at this, and then there's also projects. If I wanted to go and copy media or elements from another project into my currently open project, I can do that by going here. We want to go to Archive. So I'll click on the Archive button, and again, I can access all of my task drives, my storage. I want to create a new folder to put this new archive in. So I'll click on the gear icon and choose New Folder. The new folder is created. I can now right-click, choose Rename, and rename this Archives. Then I can double-click on that folder to step into it. Now, down along the bottom in our editing panel, we have our different archive options. The first option you see is linked archive options. If you want to use the workstation to archive the material as an access point for the contents of the archive, you can leave this set to use archive path. If you want to convert to a local path, you can choose convert to local path. I'll leave this at use archive path. 
you also have some verification options such as verify source media, verify archive data, verify both. This is a safety mechanism that can warn you if you are missing different elements that are needed for the archive. The media options are a very important part to understand because the default settings is going to create intermediate files, intermediate media of all the media that is inside of your project. This is the largest and most inclusive option you have because, as I just said, Flame is going to create intermediates of all the media that is inside of your project. The benefit of this is no matter where you restore this archive, where you restore this project, no matter what system it's on, you do not need the external media anymore because the intermediates within the Flame archive and within the Flame project when you restore it is what Flame will be looking for and what it will use after you restore the project. We didn't look at timeline effects and we didn't look at batch effects which are basically batch setups in the timeline. But if you want an archive where you can easily rebuild timeline effects and batch effects, you would leave cache media on archive enabled. But for the option below, I would choose exclude renders. If you want to have an archive where the media is already cached and the renders are included in the archive, but the uncached media is not archived, I would disable cache media on archive and then choose include renders and cache. This way, any uncached media that is part of my project will not be part of my archive, but it will include my cached media and any renders that I've created. If I wanted an archive that includes my renders, media that I've actually processed and rendered included, but I do not want the source media to be part of my archive, I would leave cached media on archive disabled, and then I would choose exclude source media cache. Now my cached source media is not included. My uncached source media is not included, but any timeline effects or batch effects would be included. If I wanted to have an archive where the cached media will be included, but uncached media and renders are not included, again, I would leave cached media on archive disabled, but this time I would choose exclude renders. Now my cache source media will be included, my uncached source media is not included, and my timeline effects and batch effects are not included. The last option you have is an archive where the media and the renders are not archived. This will result in the smallest possible archive you can create. Again, leave cache media and archive disabled, and then choose exclude renders and cache. Now your cached source media will not be included, your uncached source media is not included, and your timeline effects and batch effects will not be included. If you choose this option, when you restore the archive, you would have to manually relink your media in the Conform tab. In our case, this is not a gigantic project, so I'm going to enable Cache Media on Archive and choose Include Renders. So Flame will create intermediate files for all my files that are in my project. I know this sounds confusing in the beginning. This information is inside the manual and there are great training videos to go further into archive and restoring on YouTube created by Grant K. And at the end of this video, I will point you to exactly where all of Grant's great videos, training videos are available to you on YouTube. For right now though, I'm leaving everything set as you see here and I choose New Archive. The dialog box will open and the first thing it's going to do is give you the name of your project and add the word Archive at the end of it. I'll leave all of this set to the same. My comment's going to tell me the date that I created it and then you can limit the size file. By default, it's set to one gigabyte. So that means every time the archive is processing and archiving media, when it hits one gig, it'll create another file. But you can click on the flyout and choose any one of the default setups for limiting your file size or choose custom, and then you can enter exactly the size you want. I'm gonna leave this set to the default one gigabyte. And then I just click create. Now the archive file has been created and we need to start the archive process. Down below, you've got a couple options. You can archive just the setups if you wanted to, 
or you can choose archive project and from the flyout you can choose archive project and close the archive project and close is actually a legacy option that really isn't even needed anymore but it's still there the concept behind this is the header originally was not written for the archive until you actually close the archive but now inside of flame 2017 the header is systematically written as the media is being written to the archive so i'm just going to choose archive project and flame is going to give me a confirm operation telling me the exact size my archive will be and what amount of space is available and then it confirms do you want to continue i choose continue and now flame goes through and archives my project including all of my media it is now done i will choose close archive and go back to my tools tab let me jump over to finder once again on my promised pegasus 2 there is our folder it's telling me it was created today this morning i expand that and we'll see three files were created during the archive process and it's showing me the size the first one that is the header of this archive and it reads that it's a text edited document the other two files this is the archived media now you don't right click and choose open with something that's not how you restore an archive you do it once again within flame so let's go back over to flame i'm going to switch to a different project because i want to delete this project and you cannot delete a project that is currently open so i go to project users and settings I'm going to switch to another project and choose load. Once that project is loaded, I can now go back over to this project, the Flame 2017 Compositing 101 2017 1. I can choose edit. In the edit dialog box, I'm going to switch this to delete project and then I choose delete project. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to do this? Remember, you cannot undo this. Choose confirm and that project is now deleted I will close this and now we're looking at the other project that I just opened but I'm gonna go back to the media hub once again I'm still looking at my archive options and there is the project we just archived if you're going to be restoring an archive that someone sent to you that you didn't archive on this system it will not be listed here under the archives you would have to manually go to the folder where it's located and then you would see it and then when you would continue to restore the archive from that file but here we see it listed right under archives because I archived it on the system with it selected I can double click on it or I can choose open archive and then there is the actual project under archive session with it selected I come down to the bottom where it reads restore project I will choose restore project flame now restores the project and puts it back in the possible projects you can open I'll go back to my tools tab I'll go to the flame menu I choose project user and settings and I click on my flyout there my project is once again I choose that and choose load flame now loads the project that we just archived and restored I choose the close button and there everything is if I go to batch my entire batch setup is still there waiting for me everything was saved everything that's inside of this media panel and all the saved setups were part of that project archive and I'm able to restore it all right so that is the end of our video series of flame 101 focusing on compositing in the batch environment i hope you found this series very helpful and you feel more comfortable working in flame as a new flame artist the last thing i want to talk about is the flame learning channel available at youtube if i come into youtube and in the search field type flame learning channel and click on that you're going to see all the different videos that are available i recommend clicking on this one right here which is the title name flame learning channel here you're going to find hundreds and hundreds of training videos created by grant k they're broken down in different sections such as what's new getting started media management timeline vfx grading this is just a great resource to take everything you've learned from this series and go beyond it so that wraps up my last video this is ken larue again i hope this was helpful and thanks for watching